Hello and welcome to our video for Stand Up Paddle Boarding Safety and Rescue. Everything within our video is through our own personal training and experience through years of doing water sports. We are not affiliated or representing any national governing body, a local organisation or local club. But we would endorse that as individuals you do register with a registered governing body and you do attend local clubs to do a recognised course in safety and rescue by a qualified instructor. We would always endorse that as uh, sup paddlers you always go out in at least pairs if not a larger group never go paddling on your own and always tell somebody else back at home where you're going and what time you're expected to be home. Safety is our primary concern and we always would endorse that you wear the correct safety equipment and adhere to manufacturers recommendations. A couple of pieces of essential equipment we would always recommend that you wear a correctly fitting and suitable personal flotation device. We would always recommend you use a lease whilst paddle boarding. We would personally go for the one on the waist because we find it less restrictive when doing the rescue techniques and we don't get tangled. We also would like to recommend that you wear a helmet because there is times when you could bump your head and as I say safety is a big concern. The last thing which is essential is good adequate footwear because in the water that we're in we don't know what's on the bottom and we wouldn't like to cause ourselves an injury. We do hope you enjoy our videos and take notice of them and learn okay, from so them. We'll use the Thank you very much. Make sure you get their attention. Swim in the water. Keep your hands underwater and they'll be throwing you in this rope. Throw the rope over their shoulder. I drop down onto my knees. Bringing the rope in, keeping a clean end principle. Keep facing me, keep hold of the rope. Kick your legs if you can, keep facing me, keep hold of my rope. I'm bringing the patient all the way in. Now it's really important you keep hold of my rope. Do not let go of my rope, but I'd like you to stand up. Keep hold of my rope. Stand yourself up, keep hold of the rope. Now I'm going to walk you down, keep walking, keep hold of my rope. Gently does it, keep walking, keep hold of my rope. What's your name? Andy, keep hold of my rope, keep walking nice and slowly. It's much easier to climb out from this bank here. I'm going to back off, climb out, keep hold of my rope. Andy, bring yourself all the way up, keep away, and have a sit on the side there. I'm going to repack my bag, so I'm going to pull in the full length of my bag now. I've got my patient, I could get them into a baby bag to keep them nice and warm, administer any first aid that's needed. To repack my bag ready, I like to put it over my shoulder, holding the bag, and I'm feeding it in. So as the rope goes in, it goes on top of each other. So when it comes out, it will come out nice and smoothly. And I always repack my bag as quickly as possible so it's ready for a refrow if I needed it at all. This is a 20 metre throw line. If I was doing a refrow that didn't require that distance, I could only pack the amount of bag that was needed or I could recoil the rope rather than repacking it for a very fast throw. Coming towards the end of the rope now, never letting the end go into the bag, always keeping the end of the rope out so that I know where it is. And again, we always adhere to the clean end principle so there are no knots, handles or anything else. This bag is ready to be re-thrown if needed or I can pack it away. In the water, keep your hands out the water, I'm going to throw with this rope. Hold on to the rope, turn on to your back. Put the rope under your arm, kick your legs, keep the rope against your chest. Keep kicking, I'm pulling you in. Keep kicking your legs, keep coming in. Five meters, four meters, three meters. A 
Okay, stop kicking, hold on to my rope and stand up. Do not let go of my rope. Stand yourself up, do not let go of the rope. Are you okay there? Good. Settle yourself, are you yeah. okay? Do not let go of my rope. Okay. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Can you climb out by yourself? Yeah, I think so. Keep hold of my rope. Climb yourself out, keep coming. Come and have a sit on the side over here. We're gonna get the rope. If I needed to do a rapid recoil, I could just recoil my rope to where I need it. My throwing hand is very still, and as I bring the rope in, I'm putting a twist in it so it lays nice and flat. And if I then needed to re-throw the bag, I'd only coil as much as I needed. If I had someone else out there, a throw from a recoil, and the bag will throw out, drop down onto my knees and I could pull them in exactly the same. Always keeping the clean end principle. With my patient now, if they're getting cold, I'm now going to put them into a bivy bag and we've got our bivy bag from previously. This time, popping this around the back of my patient. Bring this over the top. <coughs> Again, I'm going to get inside with them to keep nice and warm. And we've got the window. Tucking the ends in as much as possible to stop in at least the draft. We've got the window and the patient and I are going to warm up quite rapidly in here. Whilst on the paddle ball, we're going to be looking at three main positions for doing our rescues. First of all, there's the standing position where we can have our feet parallel or we can be in a tripod position. Then there's going to be the kneeling position from one knee onto two knees and we do a lot of our rescues from this position. And then there's the prone position where we'd be laid down on the board and we can get a lot closer to the surface of the water. So from prone to kneeling to standing, and a tripod to having our feet parallel. out there or we can walk down well done you're out Well done. Keep that going. Well done. 
done, okay, stop kicking your legs and stuff, Andy. I want you to come up a little bit more for me. How's that? Good. You're out of water? Yeah. Excellent, and now we're going to go into the side. Okay. You stay there, Andy. Yeah. Okay, and up you come. Well done. When we're out of the water. Excellent. We're in the water. Bank this time. Okay, yes, To the bank. At the moment I'm only on my own so I can't get the patient any further up. I need to wait for a team so that we can move him at least three meters away from the bank. I can assess the patient in this position to assess for breathing. If the patient is stable and breathing normally, and especially if I suspected spinal injuries, I can leave the patient in this position and cover them up with a bivy bag or put them into a survival bag. 
If I can't check the patient adequately, I may have to roll them off of the board. To roll the patient off of the board, making sure the head's facing away from me, the arm nearest to me, moving from the joint, goes straight up, the other arm is straight down, coming over, grabbing onto the waist, supporting the head, remembering he's gonna drop off of the board. So nice and gently, I roll him off of the board, drop him down, always drop the arm back down, I can immediately go into a head tilt, chin lift, and I can check for breathing for up to 10 seconds. And I'm assessing for normal breathing. If we had no breathing or agonal breathing, I would be starting chest compressions and administering my cardiac massage. The patient is appearing to breathe normally, so I'm gonna place them into the recovery position. So the arm nearest to me is gonna go out to the side. The arm from the opposite side comes across, the back of the hand goes against the face, I go palm to palm with the patient. The knee from the outside comes up and I'm using the knee as leverage to bring the patient towards me. Always bringing that knee up to right angles to the body to make her more stable, bringing them as far over as possible. The key to the recovery position is making sure the mouth is facing downwards so that if any blood or vomit, any fluid appeared in his airway, it could drain out and it also allows his tongue to drop down naturally. From this position here, I now need to take an accurate respiratory rate. So I must have a timer. I'm gonna time his breathing, so I'm using his diaphragm to measure his breathing over 30 seconds. I want his breathing to be in normal parameters, which is between 12 and 20 per minute. Once I've got an accurate breathing rate, I'm then gonna take his pulse, and because of the equipment he's wearing, I'm gonna go for a carotid pulse, otherwise I could have tried a radial. So I can find his carotid pulse in his neck there, and I'm gonna measure that now over 15 seconds, and I wanna make sure his pulse rate is within normal parameters between 60 and 100 beats per minute. I'm quite happy that the patient is stable in this position. I'm worried about the environment. I've got my bobby bag, I've got extra warm clothing if I need it, and I've got my first aid kit if required. At the moment, I'm very concerned that the patient is still near the water's edge, but I can't move them adequately on my own. It would injure me, so I need to wait for my team to arrive so that I can move the patient. So while I'm waiting, I'm gonna make sure I get them out of the elements and keep them warm. So I'm gonna use this bobby bag. I'm gonna make sure I cover their feet. Although I know they're in the water, it doesn't matter. It will still warm up within the environment around them. So tucking that all the way in, bringing it all the way up, tucking this as far under as I can. I'm also gonna go inside the bobby bag as well and I'm going to carry on monitoring my patient doing my observations taking my hot drink spare clothing and everything inside I'm now in the bobby bag keeping these edges sealed down I can now continuously monitor my patient so from in here you can see us my patients here I'm here and it's already starting to warm up quite significantly for me and the patient.